Welcome to 108 Contemporary. This craft kit is inspired by Strange and Oppositional, a collaborative exhibition by two different artists, Kara Lynch, a multidisciplinary artist who specializes in video and multimedia, and Francesca Alcantara, whose series of ceramic paper bags, entitled Bucket of Blood, is a commentary on race, shared humanity, and the beauty in everyday and even discarded objects. The artist used a technique called slab building to create these ceramic pieces, and that's the skill that we're going to learn in order to create an Alcantara-inspired mini paper bag of our own. Follow along. In your kit, you'll find instructions, a clay tool, yours may look different from this, your ounce of clay, and you'll also need something to use as a rolling pin. We used a highlighter and some water, which we put in our empty portion cup. Some things that could also be useful if you want to add color to your piece are a paintbrush, some craft glue, and of course your paint. Step one is to remove the clay from the portion cup. As you'll see, I needed to use the tool to get it all out, but your clay might be a little easier to manipulate or not. If it is so moist that it is really sticking to your fingers or to the surface that you're working on, then you'll want to leave your clay to dry out for about 10 to 15 minutes and possibly work some more water in as needed. But if it's too dry, then you can always start by adding a drop or two of water to the clay as you're kneading it into a ball. If you over knead it, then it won't stick to itself, which is why we say just gently knead. It should be malleable or workable in your hands with as few air bubbles inside as possible. Now we make a slab. Roll your clay out into a thin, even layer on your clean surface or your wax paper. Now, if your clay is sticking to your rolling pin, then you might want to let it dry for a few more minutes. And if it is completely crumbling, then add a little bit of water, knead that in, and try again. While I do want my layer to be fairly thin, about a sixteenth of an inch, and even, I'm not actually that worried about making sure it's smooth, in part because I think that a slightly rougher texture fits really well with the inspiration of Francesca's work. It's your piece, it's up to you how smooth or how rough you want it to be, but when it's thin and when it's even, you're good to go. Here I've really sped up the process of cutting my clay into the pieces I need for the four walls of the bag and the bottom. As you can see, I've left the bottom a little larger than it needs to be just so that I have some space to work with. This step, scoring, making shallow markings along the edges of your piece, will help stick them together. I'm doing them all at once, but you can do them one by one. Now comes the part where we put everything together. I'm grabbing my extra clay so that I can use it to reinforce the edges if I need be. And then I am dipping my finger into the water and smooshing, that's not a technical term, the edges of my pieces together and using my tool to draw some of the clay from the bottom over the edge of the wall that I just added and then I'm going to continue doing this on each side. I'm going to use my clay tool to push the clay together on both sides of the join. And you'll see me roll a really thin bit of extra clay out and kind of press it into some of the places that might seem a little weak and wet it down and make sure that it blends really well with the clay that I have put together here. Now this process is the part that takes a while. So, you know, put on some music or your favorite podcast or show, or if you're 
doing this with other people, tell each other about the first time you ever saw Clay. Or don't. You're the boss of you. Another option that you could do right here is to create a slip instead of just using water. Now, score and slip is the traditional technique for slab building, where you score first, and then slip is a thick, soupy mixture of extra clay and water. And that creates a glue that helps bind the edges of your clay together. It can also be really helpful for when your piece is drying and if you see a crack or it seems like it's flaking in places, then you can use that slip to fill in those cracks. As I'm coming up on my last piece to join, then I can cut away the excess clay that I left on the bottom and I can use my tool and my fingers and the water or slip if you've made some to smooth out any edges, reinforce any areas that seem weak, and to really make sure that my piece is strong and will dry evenly. You're going to wanna leave your piece to dry for probably overnight, but at least a few hours. It will be soft, malleable, and if it's left in too hot of an area and dries too quickly, it could crack. So. You might want to find some either plastic wrap or a paper towel that you can put over your piece as it's drying and leave it in a cupboard or cabinet or something like that. You might be noticing that even as I'm trimming edges and smoothing out some areas that my piece looks imperfect. And I want to encourage you to let yours be imperfect. In part because, especially if you're learning something new, it's going to be imperfect the first time around, but also because the inspiration that we are taking from Francesca Alcantara's pieces is all about paper bags that have been used and reused and filled and refilled until they have texture and they show signs of wear. In fact, once it dries a little bit, I'm going to add even more texture using some coral I found on a beach. But for right now, I have something that is at least vaguely paper bag shaped. So I'm ready to let it dry. To get the used paper bag look that I want, I'm going to add texture. First, I let the piece dry to a leather hardness. It's where the outside feels like leather. And then I'm going to use a variety of tools. I could even add more clay if I wanted to, but I am just trying to get that really beat up look. In fact, a piece that I'll be decorating because it's already dry, I accidentally dropped on the floor when it was in this stage, but I really liked the effect. Quick but important step. Before you add any color, seal the porous surface of your project with equal parts water and glue mixed together. Make sure there are no bubbles, let dry, and then you'll be ready to add your color. Let's skip through the painting process. I'll just tell you that I tried both tempera and acrylic paint, and I preferred acrylic for the vibrancy that it gave me. Tempera could give you a nice watercolor look if you like. Here's the finished product. It is still drying, as is the paint on my fingers, but I'm pretty pleased with it. Also, here's another prototype that I did where I did not paint the inside at all, left the bottom unsealed, and then added another coat of that mixture of glue and water, just like I did on this one here both with colors inspired by Francesca's pieces. And I think they look like bags that have been used a few times and then dressed up to look nice. When this dries, I'll paint it too. But in the meantime, there you have it, a slab built tiny paper bag. See you next time.